This uh, is joint, uh, joint work with uh, Chris Pikert and uh, Lon Rosen from Georgia Tech and uh, IDC, respectively. Um, in this uh, talk, I will be presenting some new constructions, some efficient construction of pseudo-random functions from uh, lattices. And uh, towards this end, uh, we would also introduce a new technique, which de-randomizes the learning with errors problem. So this talk would be divided in three heads. First, I'll give some background. Then we'll talk about the de-randomization technique, which we call learning with rounding. And uh, lastly, uh, we are going to give a direct construction of a PRF. Let's start. So first, we define what a pseudo-random function is. Um, they are essentially families of function which are index indexed by these uh, seeds uh, S and uh, once you uh, select, a f uh, select a function from this family using this seed, it is essentially uh, deterministic and indistinguishable from, uh, by any computationally efficient adversary from a random function uh, on the same domain and range. And the adversary is allowed to make uh, adaptive query access. Um, in this talk, I would be talking about the domain would be the set of k-bit uh, numbers, and random objects would be in red. So uh, pseudo-random functions are a cornerstone in uh, symmetry key, uh, key cryptography. They are, used in, they are used for encryption schemes. And as uh, Stop pointed out uh, two days ago, they're also used as a primitive for message authentication codes. They're also used for some sim very simple uh, identification protocols like friend and foe. Uh, let's talk about how we construct, go about constructing pseudo-random functions. The first method would be uh, these uh, objects, uh, AES, Blowfish, this uh, symmetric, crypt, uh, symmetric crypto streams. These objects are extremely fast, super efficient. Uh, they are used all over. Uh, and they're secure against all known cryptanalytic attacks. Um, however, uh, we want uh, some sort of uh, reduction to a, a complexity theoretic assumption, um, which has been well studied in theory. Uh, towards this end, uh, Gold, uh, Goldreich, Goldwasser, and Mikali uh, gave the famous CGM construction, which gives uh, pseudo-random functions from any secure doubling PRG, len doubling PRG. Uh, while simple, uh, this is not that efficient. It's sequential. It requires k iterations for uh, k-bit input. Uh, so to re remedy this, uh, Neorangold and Neorangold Rosen in a slew of papers gave us uh, direct constructions of PRFs. And uh, these security are based on number theoretic problems like factoring, discrete logs. However, they suffer from these problems that despite being theoretically efficient, they require huge exponentiations. And also these assumptions fall under uh, quantum attacks. So how to remedy these last two bullets? Well, the session topic and Daniel's talk should give you some uh, clue, and the answer is lattices. So the advantage is we've seen them before. Lattices are simple, efficient. They resist quantum attacks. They have very good uh, average case, worst case reductions. So how, how does pseudo-randomness and lattices stack? What is the state of the art? Um, there can, you can construct a PRG from lattices, uh, but then you would have to feed it into this inefficient uh, GGM construction, which loses the efficiency that lattices kind of provide you. You can also, uh, you, to construct a pseudo-random function, however, you would need to answer queries. And these lattice-based assumptions, their prob problem is that they need uh, some sort of fresh biased errors uh, with each, uh, with each uh, query. So I'll talk about this problem in detail. And this is kind of the roadblock we hit and we attempt to solve. With that, we come to our results. Uh, we would uh, give uh, these efficient, uh, lat uh, efficient lattice-based uh, uh, pseudo-random functions. Uh, there are two, two, two uh, kinds of the, uh, those functions that we propose. The first is the synthesizer-based construction in uh, in uh, the model of uh, narrow angle 95. And then there are these direct constructions, uh, subset product based constructions in uh, analogous to narrow angle uh, 97 and narrow angle rows in 2000. 
Um, towards this end, there would be this technique of de-randomizing the learning with errors problem, generating these errors deterministically somehow. Uh, in this talk, I would be talking about the de-randomization technique and the direct instruction. Uh, details can be found uh, in the paper uh, and on the internet. So let's talk about the de-randomization technique now. Uh, I would be talking about the learning with errors problem, more specifically the ring variant, although all the results carry over to the general version as well. Uh, I, would if I would be using these uh, polynomial uh, rings, which are just uh, polynomials with integer coefficients, and um, what, you, uh, what you do is you mod them with uh, these, uh, this polynomial x to the n plus 1, which is a cyclotomic for n being a power of 2. So the cyclotomicity is used for efficiency. I'll just show you when, exactly when. We also use this uh, ring uh, R sub Q, which is the same ring, except the coefficients are now drawn, uh, the coefficients are now uh, modulo Q. So the LW problem here is for the adversary to distinguish between these two worlds. In the first world, uh, what the adversary gets is uh, a random element sampled from RQ, sampled uniformly from RQ, and it's noisy ring product uh, with some element S, also from RQ. And in the second world, what he gets, samples are both drawn completely uniform at random. So a couple of points. The sample S is uniform, and it's fixed for all the samples. Uh, and the error, uh, error, errors EI are drawn fresh for each sample, and they are drawn according to this uh, Gaussian distribution. Um, which is uh, typically short, uh, poly n error rates. Uh, this problem has been well studied in literature, and uh, the hardness is based on worst case lattice uh, problems. S mm, the LW problem by itself gives you a pseudorandom generator if you wish, but the problem here is the secret error uh, E. Um, each time you take a sample, you have to deal with getting a fresh error sample. So this kind of gives you a roadblock when you are dealing with uh, query access from an adversary, when you are trying to design a pseudorandom function. Um, could, we could get around this problem if we could somehow generate these errors deterministically. Uh, could we do that? The answer is affirmative. Uh, what we do here is instead of adding error, what we do is we round it to a sparser uh, subgroup, which is the uh, group of integers modulo p, for some p which is less than q. So what we do is we divide uh, zq into these q word p size chunks. There are p of those. And we map all of them, we round them essentially to these values, and we interpret them as numbers modulo p. Uh, this is uh, kind of. Uh, the central technique that we use throughout. We uh, extend this operation over the ring as by rounding each coefficient, thus giving us an operation from uh, R, RQ to RP. The problem gets uh, defined. This is the problem that we propose, the ring LWR problem. And uh, well, LWR stands for learning with rounding. And uh, this problem, instead of distinguishing noisy ring products, you instead try to distinguish rounded ring products from uniform over RQ cross RP this time. So the intuition behind this is LWE essentially hides the lower order, B, uh, the lower order bits by uh, kind of adding this short noise at the end. LWR instead uh, discards those lower order bits. Mm. Let's talk about the reduction from LWR. We prove that it's as hard as uh, ring LWE. For this uh, ratio of moduli, the source modulus Q and the target modulus P is supposed to be super polynomial, and uh, your uh, error rate is small. Uh, the reduction is, the, this is the reduction idea. It's very simple. So the first line just says that if you sample an element uh, at random modulo Q, and if p divides q, then it's exactly the same as sampling and rounding it, then it's exactly the same as sampling a uniform element modulo p. So the division criteria is not really necessary. I mean, if p does not divide q, then it's a statistical equivalence instead of being exactly equivalent. Um, 
Then we invoke the LW assumption and just replace this uniform distribution uh, with uh, this uh, rounding of the noisy product. Uh, and then, since the error is short and with this uh, moduli that we have set up in this fashion, the noisy ring product is, uh, the rounding of the noisy ring product is almost the same as the noisy, is exactly the same as the rounding of uh, the just the ring product with high probability since the error is short. The actual proof is slightly more subtle. It requires uh, more, co uh, more sophisticated corner case analysis. Uh, the LWR assumption in itself uh, directly gives you these objects called uh, synthesizers, which uh, Neora and Gold defined in their paper in 95. The synthesizers give you a K bit PRF through a log K depth tree of synthesizers. Uh, I won't go into the details. They could be found in the paper. Uh, now let's move on to the direct construction. The synthesizer, while being an improvement over the GGM construction, which is a K length sequence, instead you get a log K level tree. Uh, you st it's still in NC2. Could we somehow improve this? The answer, again, is affirmative. And this is the construction. Uh, we choose this key. Uh, we choose an A uniformly from RQ, and we choose the uh, elements uh, S1 through SK from the error distribution of LWE, and then we compute this function. So this looks complicated. However, this function is really simple. What we do is this input X1 through XK just indexes a subset of these uh, SIs. So if, if uh, XI is 1, then we include that as SI, and if it's zero, we don't. So once we have that subset, we perform this subset product, and then we multiply A, and then we round it. And this can be, this product can be computed efficiently. Uh, we do this, this is where the cyclotomicity comes in. We can do this uh, FFT or uh, Chinese remainder theorem sort of transformation to convert this from a polynomial product to a coordinate wise product. And then once we have that coordinate wise product, we can then perform a discrete log operation to reduce it to a subset sum sort of uh, operation. And this is kind of motivated by this direct construction that Neorangul and Neorangul Rosen gave, which is essentially very similar. However, they require exponentiation, but we don't. So let's talk about the proof of, of security of this PRF. Um, I'll leave up the construction here. It's kind of like the LWR reduction. However, um, it's slightly more uh, complicated than that because we have to hand handle these adaptive adversarial queries. The strategy would be simple. We would try to embed the LW challenge on each bit of the PRF. This is how we do it. We define this new function f tilde x, which is essentially the same as fx. Um, instead, what we do is, in the first bit, we embed this LW challenge in the following way. So if x1 is 0, we answer as usual. We multiply a with the subset product of the rest. If x1 is 1, we uh, multiply a with this uh, s1, and we add this short error. So this is the new bit which is coming in. And so you form this product here, which is extra compared to this product. Um, now, in this product, what you would note is these uh, S elements were all chosen to be short. And this error is also chosen to be short. So this combined product is also short. However, this increases exponentially in K, so you have to select your moduli appropriately. Uh, then we employ the same argument uh, as the LWR reduction, that with high probability, these two functions give the same value. Now, since we embedded the LW challenge, we now would use the hybrid argument to replace this uh, with completely uniform elements uh, instead of the first bit answer by the ring LW assumption. Then we get this new function, uh, f prime x, which uh, is, uses only the x2 through xk to give you an answer. So we reduced a bit. And then we embed the LW challenge on the second bit to get another function, then we, on the third bit, and so on, until we get the uniform function. So this is how the proof works. Uh, in conclusion, uh, what we have, what we discussed today, was the derandomizing technique from LWE, which gives us synthesizers, 
And then we also gave a direct construction of PRFs based on lattices. Uh, recently, a couple of weeks back, Mark Zandri gave us a construction, uh, posted a paper on ePrint, which shows that these construction also yield quantum PRFs uh, in the sense that the adversary is allowed to make a superposition of queries. Um, <coughs> so that's an exciting development. Some open questions remain. Is the first open question, the big open problem here, is to improve this P over Q ratios. So these P over Q ratios somehow correspond to the LWE error rates. And currently, our proofs uh, need these to be uh, super polynomial, n to the omega 1, n to the theta log k, and in the direct PRF, n to the theta k. The hope would be to somehow match the LWE sort of uh, error rates, which would be like square root n is what LWE currently achieves. We would want to achieve that. And this is probably, this is the best we can hope because uh, Arura Gay showed that there's an attack on LWE if, uh, sub-exponential attack on LWE if you go below square root n. And for the actual PRF constructions, we would want these ratios to be poly n. Uh, also, we would maybe look for efficient PRFs from other learning problems like parity with noise or the subset sum problem. So these are all directions we could look at. So that's all. Uh, I can take any questions.